here's Carolyn Jarvis. Good evening. They fly at night in the darkest corners of the Amazon. And while bats, by their very nature, conjure up fear in most, consider this. They may also be carrying some of the deadliest viruses yet to be discovered. It's the job of a new breed of scientists to test them and prevent a pandemic. Beatrice Politi takes us deep into the forest to meet the people known as the virus hunters. Daybreak in the Amazon. The sights and sounds of the rainforest. More species of plant and animal life than anywhere on Earth. This is the edge of pristine Amazonian forest. Columbia University virologist Simon Anthony is here as an observer, following a team of Brazilian scientists. A hunting party, not to kill, but to save lives. At midday, team leader Dr. Alessandra Nava calls a halt. The kind of tree is very close, mm -hmm. so it's, it makes like a perfect corridor for the bats. Tonight's mission, to trap as many bats as possible and test them for microbes. It's called virus hunting, and it's life and death work. What we're really trying to do is discover the next global pandemic, the next HIV, but before it emerges in people. Simon Anthony is the link between the Brazilian virus hunting team here and counterparts back in the States. We're here in the Brazilian Amazon um, because we know that about 75% of emerging infectious diseases in people actually come from wildlife. And of course, the Amazon is one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. It's not only diverse, it's also under threat. And here's why. The nearby city of Manaus, population 2 million. Urban sprawl carved out of the jungle and growing every day. It's called a hot spot, where man encroaches on nature and nature fights back with new viruses. What we're going to be doing is going down and sampling wildlife at various um, stages of what we call anthropogenic change. Anthropogenic change, a big word for the big impact people can have on the world around them. It's the language of a new breed of explorer. And the discoveries of those explorers from deep in the wilds of the planet are eagerly awaited by scientists in labs around the world. Scientists like Dr. Ian Lipkin, director of the Center for Infection and Immunity at Columbia University in New York. I think scientists in general are silent superheroes. Superheroes in white coats hunting down invisible killers. We've discovered over 500 viruses. Of those, I would say probably 25 or 30 are extremely important vis-a-vis -vis causing human disease. As we see more suburbanization, people moving into areas where they weren't before, we're gonna see more and more of these diseases are gonna be making the jump from wildlife into humans. That's why this team is in the Amazon looking for new pathogens that could cross over from animals to humans. Night comes quickly down here, and night is when much of the forest comes alive. 16 by 9 was invited on this expedition to see the Brazilians at work. They're part of a five-year mission to track the emergence of new diseases in the wild. We really have only scratched the surface of our knowledge of viruses or of viral diversity. Scratching that surface here often means working in the dark. The nets they use are almost invisible. Here, a rare image of a bat flying into a net. That is one angry little fellow. I think he's quite upset that we've interrupted his evening. 
Team members work carefully with thick canvas gloves. Our um, Brazilian colleagues are really expert at dealing with bats. You can see that it doesn't really take a very long to get the bat free of the net. <laughs> the bats go into bags. We generally keep bats for probably about 10 minutes, so we can just take some samples and then we release them quite quickly. And they're delivered here to a field station in the heart of the forest. And now, the tricky part, finding a tiny vein in a bat wing to extract blood. Sometimes the samples we take seem so small, it's amazing we find anything in them. But we do. The samples are flash frozen in liquid nitrogen to keep them fresh. Because we're trying to discover new unknown viruses in these bats, you know, it's really important that we have really high quality samples. The bats are all released unharmed back into the wild. Meanwhile, the samples collected are sent to Brazilian labs for analysis. So it's about 9 p.m. now. We've um, been sampling for about three hours. We've identified about four or five different species so far, which is great, including one carnivorous bat that we've never seen here before. So that's really exciting. Um, that's going to be great for doing pathogen discovery. There's an enormous amount of discovery to be done. The fact is, to date, scientists have identified fewer than 1% of all the viruses that exist. That means there's no shortage of lab work for Dr. Ian Lipkin in New York. We receive 100,000 samples a year. We receive them from all over the world. Uh, and the challenge there is to try to find ways to work them up efficiently. Working them up means, first of all, is it a virus? Does it cause disease? Is it contagious? Every time we think we have it all figured out, nature throws us a curve, right? There's a new virus that emerges that we didn't anticipate. That's exactly what happened when SARS struck a decade ago. It took weeks to identify. Today, it would only take a few hours in Lipkin's lab, time that could mean the difference between life and death. Which makes samples collected out here the first line of defense in stopping new diseases before they can get a deadly grip. 30 million people have died of HIV AIDS and it caused incredible damage to, to society. And I feel that if we had something as simple as knowing about this virus and about knowing where it came from, I feel as though the whole epidemic would have taken a very different turn. So is there a new HIV-like virus lurking in these bats? The only way to find out is for hunters like these to keep looking. Next on 16 by 9, if there's a killer on the loose. Infectious diseases don't respect international boundaries. They travel around the world very fast. This Canadian invention will track it down. London, the summer of 2012. Terrorism was top of mind, and hundreds of millions spent to keep Olympic visitors safe. But behind the scenes, another security operation was unfolding. All based on a remarkable Canadian invention. In an office on Buckingham Palace Road, health protection workers are watching a map. We've had information from the World Health Organization about an unusual situation in Southeast Asia. A highly infectious disease in Cambodia. Can it reach London? If so, how soon? This time, the outbreak isn't real. It's an exercise based on a program called Biodiaspora, a virus early warning system invented by this man, Toronto infectious diseases specialist, Dr. Kamran Khan. Any information about the geographic range of this event within Cambodia? Uh, we understand that there are patients from about 14 of the provinces across Cambodia. Working from opposite sides of the ocean, Toronto and London, they track a killer making its way across the globe. We can take a look at the travel patterns uh, out of Cambodia. 
Here's how biodiaspora works. Imagine a global weather forecast, except it's not storms, but airplanes they're tracking, and roads, and railway networks. All the ways that a virus in a human host might make its way around the world. There are surveillance systems that are out there that you probably have heard about that use the internet to sort of be mining for chatter that relate to infectious diseases. What Biodiaspora could do is then take a look at where this chatter is coming from, take a look at the movements of people, identify where the risk is greatest, and then notify cities and countries around the world. What we'll do now is we'll look at the data from here and review our risk assessment. On this day, the pandemic they're tracking is an emergency exercise, but next time it could be real. Today about two and a half billion people board a commercial flight every single year. It's a scenario that worries Dr. Brian McCluskey of the UK's Health Protection Agency. The issue is that we know infectious diseases don't respect international boundaries. They travel around the world very fast. Biodiaspora literally means scattering of life. People are moving, animals are moving, insects are moving, and, and microbes and germs are moving. So in the same way that we see the financial markets having a ripple effect in other parts of the world, the same issue applies to infectious diseases. So if we have a threat in another part of the world and now we're connected to that region, we're also now connected to the risks associated with that region. Regions like the Amazon, as people move deeper into the jungle, as domesticated animals mingle with those in the wild, the gap between us and them shrinks, and their diseases may become ours. Virologist Simon Anthony. Global pandemics and disease in general have killed far more people than, than any war has. The worldwide toll of one particular animal-borne virus inspired Khan to create Biodiaspora. The virus was called SARS. In 2003, the pandemic started in a Chinese village and raced through three dozen countries, including Canada. One of the challenges we had with SARS in Toronto was we were flat-footed. We didn't know this was coming at us, and it really hit us hard. It took the world by surprise and left 800 dead. Deaths this Canadian invention is designed to prevent. It can identify an outbreak early and help stop it in its tracks. We can generate results in seconds now, uh, as opposed to what used to take us months to do. But even the best virus trackers in the world know catching and containing disease will always be an uphill struggle. Microbes are always a step or two ahead of us, and they always find a way to, to continue and to persist. And that keeps virus hunters on the search. There are so many more left to be discovered, and somewhere in that 99% of undiscovered viruses is the next global pandemic. <laughs>